Right. Now, we're joined now by the publisher of Inside Watch Africa, Uruashi Adeguki. Now, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you morning. very much. Thank now, I, I, I know you have watched all of this, all the videos, you've been following the trends and all of that. Now, what do you make of President Buhari's response when he said, this is not about saying, it's not apologies, I want, I want that money, bring back the asset and all of that. Um, yes, I... To an extent, I agree with his uh, standpoint, saying that I want my funds back. But one thing I would want for us to all take and you know hold strongly to is the fact that when you board a plane, uh, one of the survival instructions that you're given is if you're carrying a minor, even before you cater for that minor, cater for yourself, for yourself. first, so that you can save yourself and save the minor. Now, what am I saying? What I'm saying is we need to be careful the way we treat some of these issues because at the end of the day, the United Kingdom will cater for themselves first before us. Now, if we are taking up issues and we're trying to deal with things that are bothering us, the way we present it to the world is very critical so that we do not give them the reason to continue to flog us around and, and they have started to do because at the end of the day their own concern is their own concern our own concern is our own concern and we need to manage that it's very critical just yesterday like i said earlier the president reaffirmed that when he was asked is nigeria corrupt and he said i mean are nigerians corrupt and he said yes that is a fact everybody knows it but what we're saying is the way we go about dealing with these issues is to first of all address and because you see sometimes for me it seems to us or to me that we're trying to get help so much that we don't mind whatever name we call ourselves whatever um, we, we do with ourselves as long as we get help the point is how much of help will you get such that you will allow your defense or you open up your home to outsiders to call you all sort of names to come into your bedroom and see things they ought not to see because for everybody there's a dirty linen in their own house as well okay. the point is how much of that are they showing us mm -hmm. you see the point is we are a sovereign country and we must adopt a way to protect our sovereignty that is critical because down the line when you have tell, told everyone who you are, in the real sense, how much of people would you go back to say to, oh, so we've sorted it now? Because right now the issue is, is corruption now here or was corruption here? Because Mr. President is fighting against corruption. But because we talk about it so much, they are unable to even differentiate the stand we are in now you know, away from what we were before. So that is why in branding or presentation or perception, you must manage what you share with the outside world. All right. Okay. I, I like the use of the word branding. But however, we'll come back to that because I have a question to ask you on the issue of branding. Now, you may want to ask, why the force about David Cameron's coming? Now, this definitely is not the first time prominent leaders and personalities are taking a swipe at Nigeria's corruption profile. Let's examine few of them. Now, we start with former U.S. President, uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell, who once said, and I quote, that Nigeria is a nation of marvelous karmas, a string of victories against a seemingly unbeatable foe. Now, talk show host Oprah Winfrey also stereotyped the generality of Nigerians when she said, quote, all Nigerians are corrupt regardless of their level of education and of course that comment uh, came up in 2007 after a Nigerian was caught with uh, 500 uh, uh, dollars allegedly stolen through internet fraud. Now another notable one is the comment credited uh, to Zimbabwe, uh, Zimbabwe president in 2014 when he said and I quote, Zimbabweans were becoming to act like Nigerians where you have to reach into your pocket to get anything done. Lastly, former Ghanaian President Jerry Rollins in 2013 launched a, a scathing attack on Nigeria. He criticized the leadership failure to punish politicians who steal public funds. He said the country's leaders direct resources at prosecuting anti graft fighters and prosecuting petty thieves. Now, Ms. Adeyemo. If, 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 we, if we go into the indices of, of corruption, what's, what's the uh, uh, Transparency International 
use their yardstick for measuring corruption. Basically, at the public sector, one of it has to do with a, a, a vivid a, 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 a judiciary that is up and about, a judiciary that is alive to its responsibility. Do you think the Nigerian judiciary is alive, talking about prosecution of corruption cases? Uh, all the sectors of our life are, are being sort of, for me, uh, correct, uh, corrected. Uh, we're working on all of the areas of our lives right now. And those are things that I know that are facts. They're out there. It, we're not shying away from it. My concern is how are we presenting these issues? Because that is something that... Be the today is going to go. Tomorrow is going to come. Like you're referring to some of this report that you have now. The idea is how much of presentation of some of these things are, are, we, are we clear about? Because if we're not clear about the way we go about doing some of these things, at the end of the day, when you throw words out there, this word was spoken in a meeting that is not a public meeting. Now it's gone viral. And imagine what you say on the public space. But yeah, I understand what, what, you, what you're saying, but yeah. my point is the indices for measuring corruption yeah. by Transparency International, one of them has to do with the judiciary. How alive is judici judiciary in the, as in the area of prosecution of corruption cases? Do you think the Nigerian judiciary has lived up to that billings? No, we haven't. We haven't. I mean, the judiciary, the executive, the legislature, we've had issues with all of those areas. Yes, we have. That's the truth. But the chairman of the Transparent International in this particular meeting said, rather than point fingers, we all need to come together as a world to ensure that we address these issues. Because at the end of the day, some of these things are traceable to the UK and America. Mr. President said it, that some of the looted funds were actually taken and being warehoused in the UK and America as well. Now, who is flogging or taking them out on that aspect of it. That is important. According to the Transparency International as well, they were, they've been able to identify about 39 loopholes when it comes to lobbying. That's the political aspect of, of the UK that uh, a lot of scandals are going on there. Yeah. So, you see, you see, the truth is everywhere you go, everyone has got one issue or the other. Yes, we have a problem. That is a clear thing. But we need to deal with this problem and most of it must be dealt in internally. That is critical. And there's a way you, you know, you, you present your house. Mm. Outsiders will be careful the way they come into yours because at the end of the day, that is critical. We cannot afford people coming, Zimbabwe, UK, everyone coming into our house and pointing fingers to us. That should not continue to happen. Okay. Now, let me bring in Coyote Ogundamisi here, joining us on Skype from the UK. Uh, Coyote, good morning. It's good to have you on right now. You are in the UK, a Nigerian. What are Nigerians in the UK saying about the fantastically corrupt uh, statement from the Prime Minister of Britain? Uh, thanks for having me. I think the opinions are quite divided. Uh, a few people will feel, well, it's just stating the obvious, really. Um, uh, fantastically corrupt. Uh, it's, 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 it's quite clear that um, Nigeria has got a very bad reputation, and this is historical. Um, people live in the UK, if you go to the most expensive parts of the UK, Kensington, Hammersmith, uh, even very close to the Queen or Edgeware Road, those, those high-end properties, up to like two to three million pounds, are owned by Nigerians with names uh, who are former public office holders, not businessmen. So it's quite clear. And um, uh, there are other people who feel, okay, yeah, that's the fact, but it shouldn't be coming from the Prime Minister. Uh, it was it was a fox pass on the part of the, the uh, prime minister. He actually showed it, how they actually see us, and I think we should take the positive out of this. Uh, that when General Buhari said that um, some Nigerians, uh, uh, the activities of some Nigerians, the criminal activities of some Nigeria, has had a negative impact on us as a people. People felt uh, it was being harsh. It was not selling Nigeria well. But now it's coming from another world leader. Uh, a mistake, yes, but we should take the positive out of it by actually re-engineering our system and making sure that we make our society corrupt-free. If we're clean, if th things don't go wrong, people will not speak like, uh, in, in such negative manner. Why didn't um, the Prime Minister mention Ghana? 
you know, you know there's corruption in Ghana, but it's not as endemic as it is in Nigeria. Uh, we would um, definitely be like the uh, proverbial ostrich if we deny that we have a very huge problem. But the fact is, this, this government is actually tackling the issue of uh, corruption. Is it doing well enough? Maybe not, but at least there's a will, there's a political will to move in the, the right direction. Okay, Coyote, I'm going to come to you on uh, the issue of selling Nigeria you mentioned earlier. But now let's bring in more perspective to uh, what we're, to the story. And one big question that comes to mind is, should Mr. Cameron's statement be believed or his comments be considered a mere reflection of his ignorance regarding recent ratings of Corruption Perception Index by Transparency International? Let's look at the index report. Now, the following countries are the top 10 nations ranked as having the highest perceived levels of corruption. Coming top are Somalia, North Korea, Sudan is second, Afgan uh, Afghanistan, then South Sudan, Iraq, uh, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, Libya, Eritrea, and Yemen. Nigeria did not make the first 30, but it is in the 36th position in the 2015 rating. So, however, that list is largely dominated by African countries. That's definitely a topic for another day. Now, moving on, let's look at the uh, at another angle to it and take us back to the first, to the last five years. In 2011, Nigeria ranked 37th on the Amnesty International's Corruption Perception Index, and in 2012, it dropped to 35. And in, th in 2013, Nigeria went back to 37th position, while in 2014, the rating dropped to 39th. And in 2015, it dropped back to 36th position. With all that said, let's listen to the reaction of the Global Chair of Transparency International, Yosei Ugaz. Two-thirds of the world is affected by significant corruption. So yes, there are countries with fantastic levels of corruption, and some of them appear in the third world and in the poor part of our, our globe, but this would not happen with a complicit participation of the first world, developed countries. Where that's all those monies. In the case of Nigeria, 40% of the population living in poverty and $150 billion left the country through illicit flows. Where did that money go? It went to the United States, it came here for property and lavishly lives of those that are on the corrupt. All right, you, you just heard that from the head of Transparency International. I like the, there's a question he asked there about $50 billion leaving Nigeria, not just Nigeria, there are other sums of money leaving the African continent. Where does that money go? It goes to all the countries that are trying to say, well, Africa is corrupt and so on. How do we just oppose this issue of the money is leaving that, cuts you of somebody, but he's coming here, also cuts you of somebody? You have to tell your story yourself. Mm. If you leave the story of your life to be told by people, they will describe you the way they see you. And that is why it's a responsibility. That's something that I want us to take very seriously as a people. Because at the end of the day, it is what is said out there. The people will take decisions on as regards us. And so what are we doing in telling our own narratives? That is critical. If we leave our story or the story of our life in the hands of the world, they will tell it the way they like. I've traveled, you know, reasonably around the world. And I know that there are issues all over the place. But at the end of the day, when they're doing their presentation, they don't give us the story of their bedroom. But we <laughs> are very clear. Each time we're eager to tell the world how much of problem we have in our bedroom, we need to deal with that. Because those are critical things. Look, I am for ensuring that we deal with corruption. That is something we must all come on board to do. But whilst we do it, we need to do it tactfully. Okay, now, let me, like, Ka Coyote, it seems you are itching to say something about uh, maybe reacting to what we're saying in here. You just listened to that video by the head of Transparency International, and uh, my guest in the studio, Oluwashi, has also reacted to that about the issue of the perception and how you sell yourself. What do you say about that? Is this time to sell yourself in the area of branding your country, or is this time to sit down and put the house in order? Look, 
I wish I wish the world, I wish the international community is run by selling stories and poetry uh, and painting a, a, a picture of uh, it's like an iPad bowl. No, no, that is not the way things work. If I come to Nigeria and I go to the passport office and I try to get a passport and I don't get a passport until I bribe an official, if the Nigerian the Nigerian taxi driver go, goes to the um, go to a road safety commission, wants to get a, a driver's license and has to pay a bribe to get a driver's license, that's the reality. If you go and last month you're taken one way, instead of last month to take it to court, they collect 50 naira or 100 naira, or you go legal and the police must become the armed robber. You know, that is the reality. You know, when things change, you don't need to tell the story. The stories will speak for themselves. Let me give you an example. If you go to the Republic and check into a hotel and you don't have to tip someone forcefully and you go into the same uh, version of hotel in, say, Yenegua or Lagos and you have to tip someone, that is the reality. When things change for the better, you know, people will come, they will visit Nigeria, they will see that, oh, we went to Nigeria and I did not have to bribe a government official to bid for that contract. That is the story speaking for itself. Um, look, let me give you an example in the UK. Before, Nigerians in the UK were seen as fraud stars. There is no day you, you, get, you, you, you go on the news, you will not hear about one or two Nigerians being arrested. But over time, things change. Things change because the number of Nigerians who are involved in credit card theft dropped. The number of Nigerians in prison dropped. So now, people see Nigeria a little bit with some sort of respect. Things will change if you physically do it rather than talk it. So it's high time that we, we need to just look at ourselves and act what we speak. Uh, make sure we corruption is not just the government. The people of Nigeria, ourselves, we need to do, do things right. When you owe a worker six months salary, the tendency is that that worker will, will look for other means to, 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 to survive. But that is not to say that Britain is a perfect system. Most of these stolen wells are kept in foreign uh, countries, they are kept in, the, in Western Europe. And uh, the British government and, and the EU must do as much as Nigerians will do to tackle the issue of corruption. Okay, perhaps what, what we should be looking at here is the issue of hypocrisy, some kind of hypocrisy really. Uh, because the perception, the index for, 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 for measuring corruption has to do with just the public sector really. What happens to the private sector? In the UK, you remember uh, the issue of uh, a lending rate rigging that led to the um, replacement of Martin Whitley. What happens to that? Well, I did, I did mention that there is not a path system in the UK, but it's, uh, it's uh, when you steal public fund, uh, it is taken seriously. The institutions would work for you. Uh, if I work in an organization that if I, if I spend two pounds i have to justify it i have to present credible receipt for it and if i'm go if i'm got one thing let me give you the cases of mp if an mp is seen to me spend two thousand pounds we've seen sp mps uh, members of parliament that have been suspended and uh, yes i do agree that there is some sort of hypocrisy because actually the the economy of uk works better because funds from china uh, particularly exposed people in China, in Africa, are the ones that used to build their property market. And uh, that's probably one of the purpose for this conference, that the world needs to come together and fight this battle together. We are in all this together. Because when corruption leaves, when the money leaves Africa or leaves Nigeria and comes to the UK, and Nigeria becomes a country that is ungovernable, the UK and Western Europe would have to repeal, receive refugees. Uh, who are victims of uh, the after effects of corrupt practices like say Boko Haram in northern Nigeria or uh, uh, whatever uh, kidnapping in southern Nigeria and people will want to live and migrate. So the hypocrisy is international wide. It's not just in the Western world. It's within our country too. The system, our institution, our judiciary needs to change for the better. The legislation, the, the, the senators who are sent to make laws but end up appropriating money to themselves and their, their pockets need to have a change in direction. It's even an iron, one of the most flamboyant uh, perceived to be corrupt senator uh, is the one represented in the Nigerian Senate in this anti-corruption conference. So those are the kind of things that I need, that we need to look at. So it's, it's not just a Nigerian problem, it is a global problem. Okay, talking about who is representing what, we've not really heard that uh, Cameron's, uh, her father's company has been totally cleared with the issue of Panama uh, papers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, and, you know, people were very critical. Unlike back home in Nigeria, uh, the, the Prime Minister David Cameron was heavily criticized by ev almost everybody in the UK, whether you're conservative, whether you're 
Labour, whether Liberal Democrat, everyone said that he is a beneficiary from the tax, uh, getting involved in tax haven. And in all fairness, the UK cannot wash its hands clean because most of these uh, safe islands are actually overseas territory of the United Kingdom, where you have uh, a foreign politically exposed person going there to keep uh, uh, what is perceived as stolen funds. So it's a big, huge problem. But people, pray, but at least in this country, the pressure on the government would work. It would move forward. The Prime Minister had to apologize. He, after lying three times, he had to be forced to admit, you know, and he had to be forced to actually uh, propose reforms. And in all fairness to him, he had consistently talked about tightening the ability of particularly exposed persons to use overseas territory to keep stolen funds. So progress is being made, but there's a long way to go. All right. Many thanks all right, for all right. your <laughs> time on TVC Breakfast. And this morning, Mr. Coyote Ogundamisi, we appreciate your thoughts. And it's now time to bring in Moses Omagana to tell us what is happening. Yeah, of before, course, trending. Uh, yeah, before before we bring in Moses, let, let, let's, let me ask uh, Oluwashi here about the use of fantastically corrupt. Is that is that just being paradoxical? Or is it just the euphemism of trying to paint something bad, bad in, the, in somewhat a good light or something? That's why you're the advice, uh, that when you fall, you quickly stand up. Because when you're on ground, anybody does anything on you. The idea is killing, take him out completely. Um, yes, I understand the standpoint of the, um, the guy who just spoke from the UK. But the truth of the matter is, you cannot shut Nigeria down because you want to do corrections. We will continue to do corrections. Whilst we're doing it, Nigeria will go on. A lot of people, particularly those of them who are outside there, are going through a lot of problems because the story that has been told about us, that is my concern. We cannot afford that story to go around because at the end of the day, some of them or some of us that are good people find it difficult to go around because of the stigmatization that we have. Okay, talking about rebranding, the, the, the point there is, uh, 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 Coyote said something. He said the story will tell itself. It will show itself, if it is really there, to show itself. Just like Nigeria is, the, 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 the standpoint of it, Nigeria is so corrupt that the world sees. It's not because anyone went around saying Nigeria was corrupt. It's because of the activity. If it changes, the world is still going to know. So why don't we rely on that and let the story tell itself? I got in from the uh, South Africa two days ago mm -hmm. and um, I, I went to a particular stand to speak to a woman who runs one of the most luxurious train mm -hmm. in the world. And she said to me last year when they wanted to have Nigerians on, they were thinking of employing security men because they thought that Nigerians are people who will steal of them. Mm -hmm. When she had a two, three day experience with Nigerians, she particularly said to me, look, she." Don't change. I like the way you are. You're a good ambassador of Nigeria. There are several Nigerians, mm -hmm. thousands and millions of them that are great people, ambassadors all over the world who are doing great things. I believe in that. Now, you cannot stigmatize some of us and say that is our story. I refuse to agree. The idea is whilst we're doing the correction and doing house cleaning, please let us be strategic about it so that we do not start to deal with things we ought not to deal with because a particular perception is in us. Okay. All right. Uh, it's time for the news update for the time. And uh, Buki is standing by. The deal with petrol pump price now 145 naira per liter. Minister of State for Petrol, Ibe Kachiku, disclosed this after a meeting of industry players presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju. He also said anyone who could now has permission to import petroleum products. President Mohammed Buhari has responded to British Prime Minister David Cameron's description of Nigeria as fantastically corrupt. The president said he didn't need any apology, but demanded Britain returns looted funds and assets instead. And there was a minor, before that, a former chief of air staff alleged to have embezzled 4.8 billion naira has been arraigned at the Federal High Court, Abuja. Air Marshal Mohammed Umar pleaded not guilty to the seven count charge preferred against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The trial has been fixed for June the 7th, 8th and the 9th. And there was a minor controversy at the Code of Conduct Tribunal on Wednesday over the ownership of properties purportedly bought by Senate President Bukola Saraki from the federal government. 
Prosecution witness Michael Wetskas told the tribunal that the properties were privately owned. This is contrary to an initial claim that they were bought from the Presidential Implementation Committee for the sale of government houses. Those are the main stories this hour. Over to you now, Mike and Busola. Thank you very much, Buki, for the news update there. All right, you're still on the TVC Breakfast. We are discussing the corruption perception of uh, uh, generally about Nigeria, especially following the recent video of uh, David Cameron that went viral uh, saying that Nigeria was amongst the fantastically corrupt. In fact, the word or the term fantastically corrupt is being used one way or the other now on the streets in, in, in Lagos, in Nigeria, parts of the country generally, even to refer to different things. Now, I'll, I'll bring in uh, Moses Omogena now to give us a reaction of uh, what Nigerians are on uh, social media, especially this. Hello, Mike. Moses, good morning. Hello, Salami. A fantastic morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it seems like the British Prime Minister, you know, might have, you know, made a fantastic comment of indiscretion on Tuesday. David Cameron, in a conversation with the Queen, described Nigeria and Afghanistan as fantastically corrupt. The Prime Minister was talking about this, you know, this at the um, week's anti-corruption summit in London when he was overheard making the comment. President Muhammadu Buhari says the comment came as a shock to him. So what could it really mean to be corrupt and be fantastic about it? Well, the hashtag fantastic corrupt is about to let us know. Let's find out. Uh, the very first comment comes from Jeff Okorafo and he says fantastically corrupt is when we have a 2016 budget that was padded, stolen, later missing and even after passage no details. Interesting. And um, he went further to say when you go after the billions spent on PDP Nigeria campaign but leave out the ones spent on APC Nigeria then you are fantastically corrupt. Okay and uh, two years of abduction at Inca Nubi says it's perhaps one of the most undiplomatic things a prime minister could say to describe two countries as fantastically corrupt hours before their leaders visit the United Kingdom. And um, Kathleen Gomo says, my guess is David Cameron may have to fantastically corrupt some guests tomorrow before they forgive him and give their resources to the United Kingdom. And to bring back our girl says, and that UK is a haven for money stolen out of Nigeria doesn't invalidate the Prime Minister's candid observation that Nigeria is fantastically corrupt. Mr. Stanley Waba says, fantastically corrupt is foreign exchange scarcity slash hike nationwide, whereas Buhari's government official continue to gain access to cheap forex at official rates. And uh, Kazim Wahab says, fantastically corrupt, while Cameron is saying the obvious, I condemn his diplomatic guff. I support PMB to return home. And um, Senator Dino Malaye made a very, you know, asked, you know, made a very interesting comment. And he says, David Cameron is wrong in categorizing my beloved country, Nigeria, as fantastically corrupt. What are his indices, yardsticks, and criteria? And he got a very interesting reply. This is what someone said to him. He says, at Dino Malaye, one, locate a mirror, two, Look in the mirror. Three, what you see is the yardstick. Ouch. Okay, so these are the comments really, and Nigerians are giving us your own version of, you know, what uh, you know, it means to be fantastic, Robert. Really, let me ask you this, sir. Why do you think Nigerians and some of our leaders, like Dino Nilai, you know, were surprised or shocked at, you know, the fantastic comments made by Cameron? He merely, you know, uh, stated the obvious. So is it that we really can't handle the truth? No, no, no. I, the truth is, um, at the end of the day, like I said, and I will hold on to all through this discourse, is yes, it is easier to deal with some issues when it is said from your home. Mm. When it's said from an outsider, the idea is, is he really, what is his intention? Why is he saying it? Because you see, at the end of the day, we're all dealing with several issues and we must put all of those things in perspective. Because here is this. Mr. Cameron, he comes into Nigeria severally to market Nigeria, come do business with my people. Every day as we speak, a lot of top officials from the UK are here to come and do business with this so-called fantastically corrupt people. You understand with that fantastic money. And so you need to all put all of those things in perspective because at the end of the day, this is my country, I'm in Nigeria. And we must protect our dignity and our people because at the end of the day, that tag, 
goes around with you. This thing that we're, you know, joking with and hashtagging and all of that, that is what, when you go to Zimbabwe, when you go to any part of the world, people are saying, oh, those are the people with the fantastically corrupt story. So those are things we need to protect because at the end of the day, my child, your child, your friend, your daughter, great Nigerians who have contributed a lot to what they're doing, they build their career and all of that, they are tagged because it is a Nigerian thing. It's not the politician. It is not those who supposedly stole the money at the end of the day. It is all of us all Nigerians. Of us. Yeah. Uh, Moses, thank you very much yeah, so for I've that. Seen you fantastically yeah, fantastic. have a fantastic day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is where we round off this segment now. Uh, Oluwashi, Adeyemi, 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 Ade